In this tutorial we're going to discuss using the graph editor to add arcs and control arcs and, and timing with regard to keyframe animation. I'm going to use the rain character that has been created by the Blender Studio. You can see the license down here. It's um, Creative Commons Attribution License. Um, I did not create this character. It's a wonderful character to use and learn on. Um, so to kind of launch in, when we keyframe movement um, in Blender or in, in a typical 3D modeling application, it tends to move in a fairly straight line, not in a great arc. So to demonstrate kind of what I'm talking about, let's, uh, let's start manipulating the rain character here. So I'm going to control tab into pose mode. I'm just going to kind of bring the hands down to the sides and we're going to animate a pretty simple just kind of sweep of the hands here so um, I'm just going to give myself 30 frames I'm going to split out the bottom of my window here and give myself another timeline window and then just kind of crush it all the way down so that I have my playback controls and I have the ability to turn auto key on and off one more thing I'm going to do right now is I'm going to choose a keying set. Auto key by default uh, keyframes location, rotation, and scale. And I'm not going to use any scaling keyframes here. Um, so that really just kind of makes for more visual noise when I open the graph editor. So I'm going to go click on keying here, change my active keying set to just location and rotation. And then next to auto key, the auto key button, I've got this little checkbox for only the active keying set. And that will stop it from uh, keyframing scale keys, uh, scale keyframes. So I'm going to turn on auto key and I'm going to shorten my timeline to just 30 frames. We're just going to keep this really simple and short. And I'm going to do two keyframes for each bone that I'm going to keyframe here. And that's just going to be kind of a start position here so I'm gonna put the palm out and palm sort of forward I'm going to bring these both kind of forward and every time I move these or rotate them it's keyframing them so you can see my keyframes down here on my timeline and I'm just going to try to kind of create this sort of sweeping hand gesture here Let's, uh, let's open that hand just a little bit. And then I'm going to keyframe the rib cage just a little bit here. I'm starting to kind of penetrate into the rib cage with the one arm. And I think I want the torso to kind of lean forward. I think that looks like a pretty good starting gesture and we've really only keyframed three bones I think we're probably going to need to keyframe the locations on the elbow poles as well so I'm gonna just tap I on each of those so they have keyframes as well so that's five bones we've got one rib cage two hands and each elbow pole are now keyframed let's go to our end position here and we will to start off with, I'm just going to undo all my rotation work on the rib cage. So Alt R will do that. And I'm going to rotate that kind of the other direction and sort of back. So kind of like that. And we want her hands to be sort of facing the other way. So I might actually just take this pose here select both hands hit control C and you can see down here it copied that pose to the buffer and if I hit control shift V it pastes it X flipped which is pretty handy and I'll adjust it from here just a little bit to kind of fit because she's not hunching forward anymore like she was when she started to kind of fit the ooh, that's not a happy wrist. There we go. And I think that looks pretty good. So what we can do now is we can sort of look at this motion and actually, you know what, let's adjust the 
the elbow poles. There we go. So she kind of says you could have box number one or you could have box number two. Let's open this gesture even more maybe. Okay, I'm going to quit fiddling with it because it's really not the point of what we're doing here. Box number one or box number two. Now what I'm going to do is select both of these hands and we're going to look at the motion paths for them so we can kind of see how our arcs are looking. So let's go to the pose menu with both of those selected. Go to our motion paths and just click calculate. I'm just going to use the default settings. And there you can see that those are pretty straight lines. They're not really good arcs, and we should not really be very happy with that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open the graph editor, and we're going to edit these paths without putting any more keyframes in. So I'm going to split out my window down here and just open a graph editor. And I have this little button selected here by default, this blue arrow, and what that means is that basically we're just going to be looking at the graphs for the selected bone. If I want to look at everything, I can uncheck that, but that starts to get to starts to kind of become a spaghetti bowl. So let's twirl this down over here. We have location and rotation keyframes for this hand. I'm going to click on normalize so that it kind of auto zooms in vertically for us. Um, but otherwise you can control the scale of our vertical graphs with this by uh, scrolling, by adjusting these scroll bars over here. So first of all, I want this hand to move down as she sweeps over so that it kind of goes in, a, in kind of a smiley face arc instead of this straight line. So let's just kind of wiggle our different uh, location axes here and see what up and down is for this bone right now and it looks like it's actually X so I'm gonna undo that and I'm going to turn off all other axes here so I can just see my X location I can come in here and I can click on my keyframe I'm gonna put my timeline marker somewhere in the middle of the action and I'm just gonna use this handle to adjust the location you can see where it starts and you can see where it ends there. So now that's actually a pretty good arc. You'll notice the motion path didn't update. I have to update those on purpose so, uh, or explicitly. So go to pose, motion paths, and calculate again. I've selected both hands and now we have kind of this nice arc in the hand over here and let's fix the other hand while we're here. So again, we're going to mess with the x-axis. I can see that, so undo that change. Let's twirl down and turn off all the other information there. And go to the middle. We're just, again, going to select this same. Oh, and we're moving it up there, so I'm going to kind of go the other direction. You can see auto-normalize sort of uh, zooms out vertically for me and that's a pretty good arc as well so let's uh, let's recalculate our motion paths and have a look at that and I think I could probably improve that arc a little more let's uh, let's really kinda lean into that okay and we're going to recalculate our motion paths one last time and that's a little deeper arc and that's a much more exciting and interesting animation just because it has those arcs in it and we can use these um, Bezier curves to change the timing as well for instance we can have this thing travel a lot of its arc uh, really quickly we can also look at our other axes. So if we mess with the y-axis, let's look at the y-axis on this hand here. Turn that on and we can have this uh, 
do a lot of its traveling up front so that it starts fast and ends slow. Or sorry, the other way around. It's doing a lot of its travel right here at the end. So it starts slow and ends fast. Or we can switch it. So start slow or starts fast, end slow. So kind of a slow in or fast in, slow out. I think it might be more interesting the other way. So GX, we're manipulating these Bezier handles just the same way we'd ma we manipulate everything in Blender. G to move and uh, specify, whoop, specify an axis. Ooh, that might be a little too extreme at the end there. But I like that. I think I'm going to kind of make that same change on this one. We'll do a slow in and a fast out. Too much again, I think. But you can hopefully see how you can kind of manipulate both your timing and your movement using the graph editor. And one of the advantages of being able to do this is if you have fewer keyframes, uh, it's a lot easier to come in and edit a whole animation if you don't have a bunch of keyframes specifying all these locations. If you just have to edit the graphs, it's a lot easier to go back and change your animation later. So I hope this is helpful and Happy blending.